uh, it is 6.02 and um, I am going to convene uh, tonight's meeting, the WSESD, um, October 29, and I'm going to begin by reading the hybrid statement. This meeting will come to order. This meeting is a hybrid meeting, which means that some or all of the public bodies meeting remotely, and some are meeting physically in a previously noticed location, where the public may attend to observe, listen, and participate contemporaneously. Please note that while we will strive to provide means for those attending remotely to participate in the public comment period, there may be technical difficulties or reasons that otherwise prevent or interrupt remote public participation. Therefore, it is important to note that the open meeting law only ensures the public's right to participate and comment at a, at a public meeting by attending at the designated physical location as posted in the notice and agenda. If a member of the public or of the public body has technical diff difficulties accessing this meeting remotely, please alert us by email and we will do our very best um, to help you get connected. In any event, this meeting will continue. <coughs> just, uh, just bear with me one second. Okay. So um, online, I, I just, uh, first of all, I uh, would like to amend this agenda. Um, it is listed right now as an executive session and we are changing it to an open meeting. And um, I would like you. to acknowledge um, our guests who are online. Um, uh, and um, I, I ask that you realize that your anonymity cannot be protected. This is now a public meeting. So um, I'm Rich Carson and um, Kim Corson, as well as uh, Victoria Matthew. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, and that's correct. I'm also joined by Peter Muller. Okay, thank you very much, Peter Muller. All right, and um, I am going to ask those guests, those parents who are present, to identify themselves with the understanding, and this is for the record, um, that this discussion will be an open public meeting. So I, I just like your verbal acknowledgement of that, please. Yes, thank you. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, I have a response from um, every parent online. Thank you. Um, I think we all know why we are here, and um, and uh, for the record, we are um, talking about uh, the transcript that's sent out from BUHS at this time of year in support of college applications and the use of class ranking on that transcript. <coughs> um, I'd like yes. Madam um, Chair, point yes, of order. Yes. Uh, on the agenda, I see a public comment on non-agenda. Thank items. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so we will we will begin with that, and then I will talk about uh, ways of structuring this conversation. Thank you. So Thank you. we're going to begin with public comment on non-agenda items. So um, we are open uh, to hear comment, and um, okay. As per as per our structure. Um, the board and administration is not going to respond, to comment. Instead, we are going to listen, we're going to take notes, and then, uh, if necessary, respond accordingly. So, is there anyone Great. in the public who would like to comment at this time? I would. Um, Rick Corson, I think. I thought this was non agenda items. Yeah. So, can we, is this for a non agenda item that you want to comment? Well, um, can you tell me what the agenda was the specific? Well, agenda the agenda, is? as I just stated, um, and oh, okay, I, great, okay, fine. Well, that's sorry, I misunderstood. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. I know. I agenda. I, I would would, like, man, would, am I able to make a comment, Deborah? Um, is that okay? And 
I just wanted to say thank you to you. And I want to say thank you to the board. We are not here to be contentious. We're not here. We're not looking for a fight. We're just looking to shine a light on a, um, a issue that has uh, come to our attention that we've tried to raise repeatedly with the school, with the administration, for the betterment of the kids in Brattleboro. So I just wanted to say that right off the bat. We're, we come you know, uh, uh, with solutions and um, progression in mind. So one of the, one of the things that we're uh, happy to have is Katie, one of the people I've got is Katie, who is an expert in this issue. And we've offered her um, a few times to the school to, you know, I think it's really helpful to have an expert speak to this um, who could talk to about, she talks to high schools around the country, school boards around the country. And I thought she has been gracious enough to give us some of her time. She's in the thick of, you know, getting college applications out to her students. I'm going to so, interrupt uh, you. I'm going to interrupt you one second, Rich, please. Um, we're, we are opening, we, we have a policy and it is required by statute to have a period for the public to comment on non-agenda items. And right now you are going into uh, the agenda item. Um, that, okay. That well, I, was, I, I wanted to... Yeah, I wanted to just uh, because she has graciously given her time um, and only has 15 or 20 minutes at the top of this meeting. I just wanted to alert you of that. Um, so, you know, if the if it's possible to, like, you know, have Katie um, get going, because, again, she's so, graciously offered her time to the board. I'm 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 going to stay with the agenda and we are going to begin with public comment on non agenda items. It's um, we generally move very quickly through it. And um, so let's, let me just let me just open it up to the public. We'll give it a couple of minutes, and if there are any hands up, um, those people have an opportunity to speak at this time. Okay. Again, public comment on non-agenda items. So. Um, and um, I'm going to go into uh, the reason why we are gathered this evening. I would like to propose a structure to this conversation. Um, I would like uh, the board to withhold all questions until both parties can speak, meaning parents and um, any guests that they bring, as well as administration. So let's just hear both from parents initially, I am assuming 10 to 15 minutes, and then from administration, 10 to 15 minutes, and then I would like to open it up to board question and answer. If that is okay with the board. So I'm looking for board acceptance on that. And I do see nods, so we will proceed in that matter. All right, so Rich, course, and the floor is yours at this point. Thank you. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to Deborah and the board um, for hearing us out. We do appreciate it. You know, it's been a, um, a uh, interesting process that I'm new to. So forgive me if I've uh, misstepped or stepped in a few potholes along the way. It's like I said, all to help our children and the kids at BOHS. So Katie has been kind enough to um, jump on during this incredibly busy season and just uh, comment on the trend of removing uh, to making class rank optional um, on transcripts and why that's so important and then functionally how it can be uh, implemented. So Katie, um, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's very kind of you. Hi, everyone. It's um, nice to see you all. And thank you for having me. Um, I'm the educate. Can you hear me? Yes, but can you identify yourself clearly by name, please? Yeah. And the town that you are from? Uh, my name's Katie Cotner, and I'm in Missoula, Montana. I'm the educational director for Hughes College Prep. And prior to this position, I was a school counselor for about a decade. And I'm here to advocate also to advocate for all kids. And this is a conversation that we are having. Um, yeah, just wait one second, please. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I would have thought um, Mr. and Mrs. Corson 
um, as yeah. well as Victoria Matthew, in light of the exchange of emails that occurred before this meeting, um, there was every indication that student names would not be mentioned. I appreciate oh, that. I appreciate that parents are uh, have to be identified in this meeting. So I would have hoped that you would have communicated um, with your consultant on that. So thank you. I just needed to stop you on that. Is that the issue, Sean, that yes, you were raising? Yes. Thank you very much. OK, so. Thank um, you for flagging that, Deborah, with Katie at this book. OK, Hi. thank you. That's OK, Katie. Keep on going. So what we're requesting is that the school profile reports that rank is sometimes reported. And so when we talk about the school profile, we're talking about the Common App. And the Common App is used as an admissions application for over 900 schools. And those schools require the school profile to be uploaded. And the school profile is basically a resume for the school. It's not a template that matches from school to school. It's just like a resume you and I would fill out that has generally the same information, but looks a little bit different. And so schools can decide what they report and let the Common App know what they're reporting. And so right now your school reports rank. About 50% of high schools in the country no longer report rank. And so we're not asking that the school no longer reports rank and we're just asking for it to be optional. And the reason behind that is schools have they have to report what they find very important, important, what they consider and what they don't consider when it comes to looking at students when they apply for schools. So we have GPA and rigor, which are the most common and the most straightforward is rigor, right? You can look at a transcript and see rigorous courses. GPA, it's not as straightforward because some schools have plus minuses, some schools have weight, some school offers different levels of classes than other schools do. But that's not a concern because colleges have their own method of madness for creating GPA weight. So they might throw out PE classes and because they don't, you know, value that and they create their own GPA. Some schools throw out the entire freshman year to create the GPA when they're looking at their applicants. Okay, so those are the top two most common that are listed as very important. The next two are extracurricular activities and rank. So we're here to talk about rank. Rank is such an ambiguous number. When you look at the number, it doesn't tell much of a story, right? You have where they are in regards to their class, but we all know kids are coming and going at various times. We know that that rank is reported at that specific moment in time and not necessarily reflective on the rank prior or post to kids coming in and out. We know that kids are transferring in from other schools that maybe have the opportunity to take eight, nine class periods in a day. And so then that's gonna impact the way that the data shows. And so the way I kind of explain it is rank is sort of like a blemish. OK, if you've got a big pimple on your face and you look at the mirror in the mirror, that's all you see. Right. You don't see all the, the cute outfit you put together and the way you styled your hair. Right. But if you don't have that blemish, then you notice all of those other things. So if the rank is not there, if it doesn't reflect as well as all of those other aspects of the applicant. Right. Their volunteer, their um, leadership, their rigor, their GPA, all of those other things. If they're just focused on the blemish, the rank, then there's not those other facets. So here's the thing that bothers me is why, if schools know rank is not a very good indicator um, of student success necessarily, it's just such a blurry number. Why do schools care? And the reality is 70% of schools consider rank. 37% of schools in the United States consider it important or very important. And the reason is gross. <laughs> the reason is for marketing, right? The reason is for bragging rights. It's to say, oh, well, 80% of our incoming freshmen were in the top 10% of their class. Well, if we delve deeper, you and I know that that's not necessarily accurate and it's not, but at face value, it sounds really good. So a lot of schools I have so much respect for because they're doing away with this even being a factor. Well, as other schools really like it for their marketing piece, 
Whereas if we were to change the school profile to say that we sometimes report rank and then students can elect to report that rank or not on their transcript, it can help the kids that aren't in the top 10 or 20% when it comes to rank, but look really awesome and are really great applicants to attend the school and all the other facets. But it also leaves the options for the kids that are one, two, three ranked to play that game and do that dance and include that. So the trend, which I'm loving, is that high schools are becoming privy to this and they're just doing away with rank altogether. And it's mostly happening in private schools, boarding schools, which then again erases the blemish on any of their kids when they're applying to schools. Now, we're not asking for that at this point. We're just ask, asking that it be optional. And I did reach out to the Common App and asked and said, what could we do? Like, what can schools do? Is there an option to change the school profile? And she reported that, yes, there is. You can change your school profile and you can upload the verbiage saying rank is sometimes reported. And so I think that would alleviate that would that would put into place a policy and a practice that benefits all students. So I think that kind of full circle is what, you know, is being requested and kind of from just our expertise in working with kids and looking at schools and looking at what schools find important and why, um, quite frankly, the whole college application process is just it's a bummer, the way the politics involved and kind of all the behind the scenes stuff involved. And so our job is to make sure kids have every opportunity to go and grow in these, the second stage of life. And rank is just one of those things that is just now kind of starting to catch wind and schools are starting to do away with it. And it's kind of something that we weren't even really aware of up until the last year and a half. And so it's something that's new news to a lot of us and something I just encourage you guys to strongly consider when when thinking about adding or taking off rank moving forward. And I apologize, I have, I'm five minutes late for my next meeting, so I have to peel off. Um, but if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to Rich and Kim and I'm happy to share my contact information if anybody wants to chat further. Thank you, Katie. Katie. Super helpful. Hi. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. I apologize about the name slip. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Is there um, anything else that you would like to add? This is directed to Rich, to Kim, um, to Victoria and Michael. Peter, sorry. Is it Peter? Yeah, it's Keisha. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just implore, you know, the, the, this all um, is for the kids of the high school, and this is all for putting them um, to be able to access schools that maybe some of the kids wouldn't be able to access because these schools consider class rank so highly. So, you know, um, our personal experience is that um, some of the schools that um, children – at BOHS are applying to some, it doesn't matter where class rank isn't an, isn't a factor. And in other schools, um, it is highly considered. So our kids, when I say our, I mean Brattleboro kids, are competing against kids that have the exact same GPA, have the exact same you know uh, rigor, but because they don't have class rank, they're at an advantage from the kids at BOHS. So that's, we just wanna level the playing field and um, it's something we flagged very early in September as uh, an issue that we wanted to have a meaningful discussion about. And we still um, are hopeful that for kids that are applying, you know, for early um, action or early acceptance, that we can help these kids get, a, you know, get on a competitive level playing field. Okay, thank you. So before I turn to administration at this point, um, is there I think Victoria 
Yeah, I'm happy to jump in a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got to tell you, I, I, well, I just want to share that. Um... I'm yes. sorry, once again, sorry, we I have apologize. three. So I, sorry, this is I, public, I just want to say this very clearly. This is a public, this is an open meeting. It is being recorded, minutes are taken, and this will be posted on the district's website. So I, I, I really do want to protect issues of um, identity, and that is why I first structured this meeting as an executive session to protect um, our students. So I, I interrupted you. It's back to you, Victoria. Thank you, Deborah. And I apologize. It just kind of tripped off the tongue. Um, so, you know, so I just wanted to share that, you know, thus far at BOHS, you know, my experience has been pretty positive. Um, you know, when I've reached out to the administration, I've, you know, um, you know, I've seen them really kind of dive into action around issues that I find to be much more complex than this issue, in fact. And so when Rich and Kim spoke with me about this, I was really kind of stunned, you know, that um, it wasn't something that had been acted on in a timely fashion. Um, so I was really happy to jump in because like Rich and Kim, you know, I believe this is really important. Um, you know, I look at the process that students are going through right now. They're working really hard. Um, with their teachers to prepare their essays for college, with their guidance counselors to get everything in place. And, and it, it just feels like this isn't really detrimental. And really, I, I mean, it, it, it doesn't make that work a waste of time, but it certainly makes it a sight harder. Um, so it, it really feels like not only are we making things difficult for our children, we're making the teachers work much harder, we're making the guidance counselors work much harder. So I really do implore the administration, let's stop removing this obstacle to admission. Let's make our students much more competitive. Let's make them able to actually get into competitive colleges. And, and you know, it's, it's really as simple as unchecking a box. Um, it's, so yeah, so I really... I really want to see something shift. Um, and I'm really hopeful because I've seen this district jump into action before that this change can happen. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some resolution today. Thank you very much for those comments. Thank you. So if uh, no one else has anything to add at this point, I am going to um, turn this over to administration. Um, and since uh, so many people are on Zoom, uh, I'm gonna ask that as people speak, they identify themselves. That would be very helpful. Okay, I'll just start quickly by saying that we are very proud of the way we support our students and families through the year of college process. Um, our expert, I'm sorry, just wait one second. I'm sorry, Tim. Could you identify yourself? Mark Spino, superintendent. Okay, thank you. Mark, sorry. And, yep, yeah, sorry. Um, and we're proud of how we do support our, our students um, in many ways. Um, our expert is Rhonda Weingartner and Brooke Welsh, who are here this evening, uh, who work as guidance counselors at the high school. Um, so maybe I'll turn to Rhonda. To share a few words first, and then Brooke certainly feel free to jump in as well. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you, the board, and the public listening, and especially for the parents who have brought this issue. My name is Rhonda Weingarner. I am currently the director of counseling. I'm considered the school, the counseling department chair. I'm also currently the dual enrollment coordinator for the district. Uh, dual enrollment is a process that helps students gain college credit for the high school courses they take during their school day. Um, we had a presentation earlier by Katie Kuttner from Hughes College Prep, and she explained that she's been with the prep organization for a few years and a high school counselor for 10. I have been a high school and college counselor for 40 years, and I very much take the issue of fairness to all students involved. I now in my new role have to take an issue of fairness to the people on our staff 
who would be tasked to complete this change. And I want to address a few things that were said. I had a different statement prepared when I got here, but I want to um, address some things that were just said by Katie and by the parents um, in their opening statements. Um, Katie mentioned that she, who works for a college prep organization, it's been very, very recently on her radar with the last year and a half that there have been changes in rank and that the trend is starting to move that way and that 50% of high schools uh, are now not reporting rank. Those are amongst the small and private high schools in this nation. I did take the time to read every article that Rich, Rich excuse me, sent me, and I appreciate that, Rich. It has been very, very informative in what I'm gonna share today. 75% um, or more of our school's public high schools still consider rank, um, and this is something that hasn't been brought to our attention a year and a half ago. This was brought to our attention, as Rich stated, on September 3rd of 2024. The exception I take is that it's been told that this is not a complex issue, this is a simple issue. The matter of it just takes pushing a button, and we have been asked many times, especially in Katie's expert testimony about school profile. So when we are talking about when we make rank optional, there is Rank reported, rank not reported, rank optional. Katie mentioned the common application. When you look at the common application right now, the statement made on the common excuse me, application questionnaire, question for students in school. On the matter of grading, you are to do graduating class size, class rank if reported. If available, you are to put it. There is no statement currently about offering class rank as an optional situation. And as Katie said, the one way to do that is to upload the school profile. Currently, our 2024 school profile, which was in place far sooner than September 3rd, we do not take an issue of putting something out publicly that represents the school lightly. We have had many discussions on how we present ourselves and that school profile is indeed listed it is uploaded onto a system that we use internally called naviance naviance is our application management system that every student at our high school uses all of our teachers use it for their pro their letters of recommendation our office managers and counselors use it to do transcripts again the school profile any and you name it, it is a very complicated process to roll out all the pieces and parts that are needed in a college application. Our school profile states that class rank is a published article and it states final grades and all credit courses are included in ranking process. AP courses are weighted higher than other courses. To take and change verbiage then to unload every single student. We, we batch load our students into the Naviance system to be able to remove all of that and then to have to poll every student and every family as to whether they want a transcript on a rank on their transcript or not. We also then have to include our IT department to create a new transcript that does not have rank, and it would entail having our office managers and our counselors look one by one by one load. And I know that is what Rich has asked for, but to be able to do that between September 3rd and October 15th, which was the first application deadline that affected many students, including members, family members, and people in this room right here, is not a simple process. It is not a push of one button. We are not saying that we do not want to revisit the rank or to make it optional, but to be able to be told that we must do that in quite short order, and the date that, Mr. that Rich is asking for is November 1st, that is Friday. A decision to grant this would be a Herculean task upon our office managers and counselors 
to pull back everything that's already been said. It would take a public state statement to every single college that we have already contacted and listed our profile, listed our statement of ranking. And to, to do that, I think would greatly damage the reputation of this high school, the counseling department, and I implore you not to do this in a manner that has to be done by Friday. I implore you not to do that. I do not believe, and I have also done research beyond what Rich sent, and it, it talks about if we were to make rank optional, the school has a, a responsibility incumbent upon it to reach out to all parents and all students impacted by such a change because it has been the culture that Rich's son and the families on, that have presented here tonight, this has been their culture for four, three and a half years, four years. They've known about rank. We would now have to pull all of that back. Students who have applied already, and again, I know we're talking about a September 3rd deadline when this started, even if we had considered it then. Again, it is a Herculean task. It is not a push of a button. And to, to be able to do this and not have the voice of every student in the senior class and the junior class that is impacted by this, scholarships bunk on it. Green and gold from the University of Vermont. There are a number of public institutions that still ask rank. They still, and that is a cultural change that we may need to address Colleges begin to address it in other ways, but again, it is not a simple push of a button, and I really, really hope that, that decision is to give us time, if, if, if this change is to be made, to do it in a manner that is equitable to all people involved and to allow us to get the input of every parent, every student, do it in a timely fashion, give us time to republish the school profile and to upload load it in a, in a manner that does not greatly oppressively impact the few handful of people on this campus that would have to do that between now and now. And I thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to add to that statement? Um, please identify yourself. Cassie Donkiller, Assistant Principal. Um, Rhonda spoke about the implications immediately for this to occur. I think, as she stated, this is, you know, this has been the culture for years. And I think just in the last week thinking about this, the amount of things that have popped into my head that are related to class rank that I didn't think of, if this were to be a direction that we would move in the future, I would want it to be really intentional and thoughtful and take the time to recognize areas that making a change if we did would impact so that we could have a plan in place to do it in a way that would not negatively impact any of the stakeholders involved in that students, staff, families. Um, so that's just my, my two cents. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you. Um, I'll throw in my two cents. I'm Brooke Welch. I'm a school counselor here at the UHS. This is my 20th year as a school counselor here. Um, and one of my um, big concerns in this um, proposal to make rank optional for students is that the transcript that is issued by the school, it's, it's a legal document, um, students' legal names have to be on it, not a chosen name. And it is a recording of every class a student has taken and the grade and the credit that they have earned in that class, as well as their GPA and rank. And if we tell students that they can opt out of having rank on their transcript, what else are they going to ask to be removed from their transcript? And then is our transcript seen as a legitimate legal document by colleges or other educational institutions that receive it? And so um, again, I'll echo what Rhonda said about concern about the integrity of our school, our transcript, and our counseling department in the eyes of people who receive our transcript, if we make part of the transcript option. Okay, thank you. May I add one more thing? Yes, Rhonda. Thank, thank you. you. Again, this is Rhonda Weingarner. Um, the process 
of being truly optional again would go back to each student having the opportunity to say whether or not they wanted rank on their transcript. And that would entail two different transcripts. It would entail uploading them very, very carefully and systemically. And if that is the direction that is determined to go, again, out of deference to my staff, to the, the counselors and the office managers, the registrar, we would want time to make sure that there is a very careful process for doing that to minimize the, any errors that occur and having to do them one by one by one. And I, again, I really, it's not a question of whether we go rank or not at this point. It is a question of having the opportunity to do so in a very well thought out and carefully planned manner. Thank you. So um, at this point, I'm Jennifer, am I allowed to comment? Oh, sorry. Um, sure, Mr. Corson, of course. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I absolutely, Rhonda, you've been terrific. And thank you for reaching out to us last week and having a meaningful dialogue about this. Um, we do super appreciate it and understand um, everything that we've talked about. And I think, you know, um, it, it was great to have engagement. Um, you know, what we're talking about now is an administrative issue. Um, and I think Rhonda and I, like we sort of um, both are in agreement on a lot of the issues, but I think where we disagree with, um, we started this process on September 3rd or September 4th, forgive me, I can't remember the exact date. So there was time to um, have a thoughtful discussion about this as a community. And there was time to have um, an administrative dialogue and figure things out administratively. Like um, I, you know, hearing that uh, it's an administrative issue is very frustrating for me, for Kim, because we've been at this now and here we are, you know, um, what, two months later um, discussing this. Um, so it's hard for us to swallow now, oh, it's two days away when we flagged this, you know, literally months ago. Um, so that's a very, uh, you know, that's a process question. And, you know, Brooke, you know, we appreciate all the work you do at school, but, you know, we're not talking about GPA. We're talking about class rank, um, a, a, you know, a thing that I think we uh, have shown is, um, you know, having the kid um, decide what's best for them. You know, you talked about um, colleges looking at um, class rank for scholarships. Those kids can still put class rank on their transcripts. We're not, we don't want, we want what's best for every kid and every kid to be able to make a decision based on the schools that they're applying to, to be able to have the option to not get caught up in a class rank competitive situation. Mm -hmm. um, so, Again, you know, this process has not been great, um, and we appreciate that we're here, and it's only in the service of the kids of BHS. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I'm just going to, um, there is a hand raised, and I realize, um, uh, I believe it's Julie ackerman Hovis. is that correct? You are muted. Yes, that is my name. Okay. Hello. And I, um, so can you identify yourself and your position at BUHS? I can. I'm Julie Ackerman Hovis. I'm the head of the music department for BUHS and BAMS, and I'm also the choral director. Um, and I'm also the parent of a senior and a junior and twins who graduated last year. Um, and you can imagine what a college search was like for twins. So that was a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> um, God bless you. I would take issue with the notion that um, we're doing this all for the kids because there are a lot of implications to taking away rank that may not be um, clear to a lot of people, including all of us. And I say that because there were definitely scholarships that my kids applied for and received last year that required rank. And some of them were 
local and did not depend on the common app. I would also um, I would also suggest that um, the practice of going and asking every single family um, whose child may go may apply for college if they would like the rank to be included has to be done carefully, thoughtfully, and have a lot of research behind it. Because what if we do tell them, oh, rank is a blemish, possibly, on your application, but then it turns out that it is for some reason needed and expected. I think we have to be very careful and responsible as educators about how we handle this. We have to do our homework. We have to do our research with all due respect. I mean, there are other um, admissions consultants, ones that we hired last year that would say, um, that would disagree about rank and also suggest that um, there is no one factor that can keep you out of or get you into a competitive school. Um, I myself, just to be, you know, just to, I went to Swarthmore College, which is one of the top rated liberal arts schools in the country. And I did not, my rank was like 20, but I had other things to offer and I got it. Um, and that was unlikely, but it happened. Um, and I think we just have to be super responsible about this question that we're asking families if we make it optional to ask, to expect that all of that can be done quickly. And also I take issue with the, you know, the argument that presenting it in September gave people plenty of, of time with everything else that the guidance department has to do including advising kids on college, dealing with PSATs, SATs, high school scheduling, helping kids figure out where to apply, um, and, and many more things that none of us can imagine. It is unreasonable, um, and in my opinion, um, to say that that was a long time. In the, in the life of a school and thoughtful planning, that is actually not a long time. And I think, um, I think that's important to be said from someone on the inside um, who's not in the guidance department, but has depended on it um, as a parent and sees the inner workings of it. Um, so those are my statements. I know a lot of, I know most of the department heads are like-minded and many of us may choose not to, you know, include rank on our own children's um, transcripts if given the choice. But again, that choice has to be a well-informed choice and we have to educate families about what the implications of that would be. Um, so that's my statement, thank you. Thank you, Julie, thank you. I am now going to open it up to um, the board uh, for questions. Would you identify yourself, please? Yes, Ruby McAdoo, a board member. Um, I think this question is um, for Rhonda and maybe Brooke. Um, so when we think about um, what, what a process could look like that does evaluate this question, um, what would that how long would that kind of a well thought out process take? Um, and this is, I'm asking really because uh, it, this touches on lots of things having to do with staff time, but as you've identified, uh, you know, technical pieces that I don't understand um, and stake, like talking to stakeholders. So with all of that in mind, what's the time frame that you envision? It, I will answer that really in, in two arenas. One, it is unusual to have a policy change that doesn't start with an incoming class of students, right? So if you're going to change something like our culture says we no longer rank, to do that to a junior and senior class is I'm at loss of a word, I wanted to say unethical, that's probably too strong a statement, but it, it, it's the word that came to me. You would want to give an incoming class a chance 
So at best, maybe this year's sophomore class, we could start looking at it. But just today, I sat in a, a conversation about some grading policies and stuff we're looking at. There was a committee that was convened about three weeks ago, and they are going to be meeting four to five times throughout the year, gathering information from teachers, students, parents, other stakeholders in the community. So to make a policy change of this magnitude would, I would say, be at a minimum of a year a minimum to be able to get just the information you need and you know there are issues in the community about making sure like is email the best way to you know are there public postings we would really want to make sure that we have hit every corridor of this community to give parents and students other stakeholders i would probably even have admissions people from some of the top colleges that our schools tend to go to someone from UVM and it, it's it would be a very involved process to do this thoughtfully for every student involved I, I would think and you would want to do it at least a year before the commencement of the upcoming school year so you're probably talking about a year to a year and a half at minimum to do it properly thoughtfully thoroughly and make sure you really do have every stakeholder's voice present in the decision. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kim, would you identify yourself? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kim Price on the school board um, from Brattleboro. Uh, and I understand the stress this time of year. As a parent of two students that have gone through this, through BUHS, understand the stress. Um, just very concerned because we can't change just one or two students everybody has to be changed and i know there's not enough time and there is my biggest concern is if that site is down and students <coughs> cannot upload their applications to colleges that are due on friday school those colleges don't care they don't care that we were down trying to fix something for a couple of students. Their applications are not going to be accepted. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Tim Mayfield. Uh, we've been talking about class rank as an option. I wonder if you can speak to uh, just eliminating class rank altogether, if that would be a simpler option. We've also been talking about a certain segment of our student population, those college-bound students, which we know they are the minority. Most of our students don't apply to uh, college ever. Um, so a few questions. One, are students aware of their class ranking without, who don't fill out a common app? It's one of the most talked about conversations certainly among the junior class and then as it begins to get towards senior class i it is a very prevalent conversation students look rank i've walked into a classroom where a teacher has written on the board this is a rank discussion free zone i mean students know and you are right right now we have about 52 percent of our population that does apply to college and um, it vacillates in a year from that being 40 to 42 percent to four year. The remainder at community colleges that that are open admissions that you know as long as you have graduated. Um, so yes, the conversation of rank is. And your question, Tim, about whether a rank should be um, there, the, the three choices are usually we rank or we don't rank. Those are the two main choices. Optional has been something that. I have really recently dove into, and I would think it's either rank or not rank to make it not, again, I've used the word Herculean. It would be a Herculean effort to make it an optional system. They would make it individual by individual, which, you know, we can have discussions about that. But most schools in the time that I've been given to investigate this are either rank or not rank. And I think most of us want to do what's best for most students. And sometimes you can't do what's best for all students. Correct. 
And one of the strongest arguments for eliminating class rank is that it has a negative impact on students' self, a sense of self-worth and esteem. Uh, imagine those students who struggle just to earn a high school degree. What impact does it have on students who are in the bottom 20 or 30 percent? What does that student think who sees that he or she is among the bottom 10 percent in rank among other students? So I know you think about these and these issues, and we do too. So um, it's a it's a complex issue. How does it promote our well? One of our goals is to promote um, graduation rates. We have to think about class rank, whether it's demotivating to students. You talked about the culture of the institution. Does it promote competition or collaboration in the, uh, in the school? There's a lot of issues that, are, uh, that we have to consider in talking about the negative impact of class rank on students who aren't those top 50% college-bound students. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you, um, Hannah, did you want to reply to that? Yeah. Okay. Could you uh, identify Hannah yourself? Parker, BUHS principal. Thank you. Um, just in response to what Tim was saying, I think it's important for us to recognize, like we're not here to talk about whether or not BUHS should have class rank, because I, as I said to Rich on the phone multiple times and through email, like I really appreciate you bringing this to our attention. I think it's a very important topic and I do think it's worth us looking into to figure out like is this best practice for our school um, and in the time and I shared with him like I talked to the school counseling department to figure out like what is our best next move and that is yes we need to look into this and figure out what's happening um, and that can't be done in the short amount of time so again Rich thank you for bringing this to our attention I also in the meantime have reached out to area high schools just to find out what they're doing right now I've only heard back from four as of now, but um, Leland and Gray, Hinsdale, and Bellows Falls all still have ranking, and Springfield does not. And so I did get information from Springfield about what that looks like, just so that I have data for like what's happening in our local areas and how they've gone through the process. And so again, this is definitely information I think that's important for us to have. It's just not something we can, I don't feel like it's something we sh responsibly could do something with in this short amount of time. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Um, sorry, Rhonda. If I may respond to Tim. Tim, I, I do hear what you say. And when you are talking about the population you're talking about that tends to drop out of this high school, um, and I don't have the data to back this up. I only have, what, my 18 years of experience in, in the community and in the school. Um, it isn't a matter of drop, in my opinion, and dropping rank or not for those. It's getting those students and because as you mentioned, if we're only at 50 or 48% of the students going to college, what are we offering as an alternative? And we are working hard to make sure that every student that walks on this campus has a sense of their future. We have reality fairs now. We are having high demand, high wage careers. We have a beautiful apprenticeship program coming up that we are working hard to make sure that every student sees themselves in a, in a light that is uplifting as opposed to college bound and not college bound. That is a language that we really need to get away from to serve our students well. And we are very actively doing that, Tim. And I don't think that would boil down to a question of rank right now. I think it boils down to a question of making sure that every student who walks to this campus has a sense of future and some clearly identified um, pathways and, and alternatives to getting there. And we are doing some amazing work as we speak on making sure that happens. I appreciate those comments, Rhonda, and I agree with, with a lot of them. Um, I just, uh, you mentioned how class rank is a heated topic of discussion. So I have to wonder, um, what impact class rank has on those students who don't do well, who are in the bottom 10%. I agree, and that's why I'm saying this needs to be a really thorough, thought out discussion. You know, more than two months would have given us to do. And I, I think Brooke wants to also, oh, sorry. We get confused a lot. No, I can only see the hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, that is uh, true. Uh, 
I'm sorry, sorry. Tim, did you want to add something? Um, maybe later. Okay, all right, okay. Um, yeah, I was just going to add quickly, and, and we all have very different roles in this building. In my role, I hear very little about class rank in this building. So, like, I'm wondering if some of the conversations classroom teachers are hearing, if it's, like, AP classes, yes, where those are the classes where students are focused on class rank. Yes. And so in those AP classes, it might be a more relevant conversation than, you know, an Algebra one class in ninth or 10th grade where students are have no idea what class rank looks like and where they fall in their class. Like, it's not something that's publicized or discussed or brought up in class discussions. I think it's just in those, that's very, very fair. Just to clarify that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and can I just say one last thing is that in my four years in this building, this family, this is the first time I've heard any family come and have a concern about class rank, which again is why I told Rich I was appreciative of him bringing it to our attention, but this is this is a new thing that has been brought to this level. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I was, there is a hand up, but I just. Sorry, that's I, a Oh, yeah. I'm going to ask um, everybody to mute themselves if they're not being called on. Okay, um, I can't see my full screen for some reason. Eva, do you have... Yeah, Eva's up in Victoria. Yeah, I realize yeah. that, but I'm calling yeah. on board yeah. members at this point. So, um, Eva Nolan, board member. Um, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. I'm Eva, Eva Nolan, school board member. Um, I'd like to thank um, the parents for sending the articles. I found it very enlightening. Um, and I, I'm i just going to say it. I think um, class rank is inequitable. I know that from um, my experience with foster care children, um, when they... I'm sorry, is somebody talking? I think iPhone 2 isn't muted on there. I don't know if people yeah, are muting them, but... Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know my experience um, with foster care children um, that they are at um, usually at the bottom of class rank. And when you get closer to the bottom, it is there's no purpose of applying. And a lot of foster children do not have parents to advocate for them. We also have a lot of um, we also have um, IEP students and children of color to consider. Um, and when you're looking at this where people are, and with all due respect, I, I feel that we are talking about class rank. I'm, 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 I know that we're saying that we're talking about something different, but based on the conversations and emails, uh, I came here thinking that we were going to be talking about class rank. So that is what I'm choosing to talk about. Um, I know that children of color, a lot of them do not have the preparedness. They do not have the map, the formula. And um, if you are a person of privilege, you will get um, preparation on how to, um, what classes to take, what easy classes to take, and how, how um, to prepare yourself to um, be at the top of your class. That's not something a lot of students have. So for me, looking at this, this is, um, this is something that should, should, not, should not be. Um, and that's just my opinion. I do not speak for the entire board. Um, I just would like to just add that. Thanks. Thank you, Eva. I'm uh, opening it up to other board members. Yeah, Sean Murphy, um, I really appreciate it. This is a very complicated issue. Um, so I really appreciate the parents' viewpoint. I definitely appreciate the administration's viewpoint. Um, and I, you know, I think that there are some advantages to having rank, despite what Eva just said, which I also agree with. Um, and that is, if there are students that say, okay, I want to go to an Ivy League school. So what I'm going to do at BUHS is I'm going to take as many AP classes as I can. I'm going to, you know, it's, it's a motivator. It can be an extreme motivator. Is it a privileged motivator? Probably it is. Um, and that's really too bad. Um, but it, that's a societal, a huge societal um, you know, organization. That's, that's been going on for centuries. Um, and 
I'm not in favor of it, um, but I have to come down after reading the letter that was sent. I have to come down on the fact that um, I think it's really important that this came up, but to have it presented at a special meeting on October 29th with a decision on November 1st, even if it did start on September 3rd, and I went, I made a whole timeline of, of emails, and the, I didn't see the September 3rd email. So the first one I saw was right at the end of September. And so I think it's too bad in some respects to have, not too bad to have a discussion like this, but I think it's too bad that the implication is that a board of 10 can sublimate their wishes on a school district of 2,200, 300 students, 435 staff, um, you know, to do that on one night is, is actually beyond the scope of what it means to be a board member as we, I think was our ethics pledge, um, said that um, our duty and our job, our task, is to try to implement that schools are well run, but not to run them. So if you make a hericulum, you know what I'm trying to say, um, if you make a big decision in one night, then you're really stepping onto we are running this school. And I'm not in favor of that at all. Okay. I thank you, Sean Murphy, for um, laying this out very clearly. Um, there is the issue of uh, and I do see I do see a hand up and I will I will get there. I'm not I I'm not um, gonna forget that. But um, I think there is the issue, the discussion point of the value of rank, pros and cons of that. And then there is uh, the issue before us of a November 1st deadline that, that as a district we're being asked to make a significant change immediately. And, um, and then there is that other issue that Sean has just expressed, um, the role of the board in terms of oversight and um, the role of administration in terms of managing the school district. So I think we have to tread very carefully. And um, this is definitely, um, it's October 29th. I'm hearing that loud and clear. We've got, you know, as, a, as, a, as an individual who um, did some college counseling privately, as well as a um, senior teacher and working with students on their college package, um, as well as a parent working through Naviance and the many recommendations I've sent in as a um, humanities teacher. And we get, very, we get hit very hard, um, English and social studies. So um, this is a critical time. And uh, certainly um, I would advise any student who is applying with a November 1st deadline, their application should be sent through Naviance right now. Um, they should not be waiting until November 1st. The system, um, everybody in the nation is um, uh, playing a, sort of a, playing the odds in terms of applying early. It's everybody is doing it. And uh, everybody is hitting that button, that send button at the same time. So it's really critical that systems um, work well and smoothly at this time, that nothing crashes. Um, that's my understanding of um, the process that we're in. Um, Victoria, uh, or is it Peter? I'm not, I'm, I, it, you're both on the same screen. So um, I'm sorry. We're on the same screen, it's okay. Um, 
Yeah, I think we're both of the same mindset. So I just wanted to address a couple of things that were talked about a little while ago. And, you know, I thought it was interesting. I think it was Rhonda that was talking about, you know, going into classrooms and students are told not to talk about class rank. Um, if it was such a productive and helpful thing to include, then why would teachers be telling students not to talk about class rank? It feels pretty contentious to me. Um, it certainly is a competitive thing. And I think the really sad thing is the very binary nature of it. You know, I think one of the things that, you know, we're trying to do with our students is to show that they are more than a number. And all that we're enforcing with class rank is that they are in fact only a number. So despite what we might be doing for that bottom 10% of the institution, the truth is we're still boiling them down to a number, which to me, is truly heartbreaking. And frankly, you know, okay, it's true that, you know, Rich only brought this up in September, but shouldn't somebody at the institution have brought this up earlier? If this is such a national issue, isn't it your role mm -hmm. to be educating the parents and the board about this and about how damaging it is for those bottom 10%, as well as for those students that are college bound? I mean, it's, it's quite upsetting to me that the finger is being pointed at the parents that are lifting this up when in fact, it is not our role to do that. We're not educators. We're looking to the educators, the guidance counselors in the room to really lead the way and to ensure that our students have the best possible opportunity to apply to competitive schools. And we're talking beyond UVM now. You know, I think for some students, UVM is a safety school. So I don't know that that is something we should be totally benchmarking against. Um, and then another point, um, I think it was also Rhonda that talked about the fact that this is policy. It's not, in fact, policy, I've been led to believe. It's process. And I think that has different implications. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria, for um making that distinction about policy yes and, and i am definitely um chair of the policy committee mm -hmm. so this is a protocol it's protocol. yes it's a process you're absolutely correct I um i again we we're um in this realm of um, engaging in a discussion um about the nature of rank and again, there are really two different issues that we're dealing with this evening. One is um, a deadline, and the other is having that uh, close examination and consideration of policy. And I would strongly recommend um, uh, immediate attention to that, uh, given the issues that have been raised this evening. And I, uh, I sort of look to the admin side of the house to engage in that uh, work immediately. And um, the other issue that I would stress is that stakeholders be part of that discussion from the very beginning. And as I, as I consider uh, what we're doing this evening, stakeholders are not present. I do want to commend um, Victoria and Peter and Rich and Kim for bringing this forward. Thank you very much. I think this is a critical discussion. And um, I see heads nodding about the room. Um, so thank you very much. Um, Ari Jackson, you have your hand up. Thank you. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Pardon me. I just wanted to chime in as uh, the father of a recent graduate and um, kind of give the perspective of someone who's been through that process. And I would have loved to have had the chance to choose whether rank was on my student's transcript. Uh, my feeling is that it did perhaps put him at a, you know, it's hard to say there's so many factors, but perhaps it did uh, put him at a competitive disadvantage with some schools. Um, I really can't speak to the administrative hurdles or anything like that, but but I can just speak to my own experience. And my experience was that I wish that I had at least had the choice and been informed about it. And so um, I do, again, commend you all for having the tough discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it is a tough discussion without doubt. Um, Tim, did you want to add something? Yeah, first I'd like to echo what you said. I really am grateful to the families that brought this up. 
I think uh, in the long run, it's only going to make our district and our high school better to have a continuing conversation about class rank. So thank you very much for bringing it to our attention now. Um, the, uh, to the board, um, I have a question about how to proceed with this. We have a policy, and I'm also on the policy committee, um, F6, I think it is, education records. Um, and I think this discussion would fall under a review of, uh, of that policy. Um, but I'm just not sure how the board feels about whether this should go into the policy committee to consider um, amendment to F6 or whether this should be a full board uh, discussion to consider more about the about where we want to be uh, as a district and with class rank. Okay. Um, thank you. I certainly pulled all relevant policies. I went down the list um, this evening and copied them and I'm looking at F6 um, and I certainly don't see anything uh, about transcript on no. it in terms of looking at it. And I don't know that, I, I mean, it's something for policy to consider whether we want to get into the minutia of, uh, of everything that uh, is, um, that proceeds at the high school level. Again, I just want to err on the side of caution and uh, practice board oversight. And, and it's something that we discuss in policy all the time um, uh, about not overstepping the line. Um, Matt, you had your hand up. If it's okay with Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion. I would appreciate that, thank you. And that's in keeping with uh, where Tim is leading us. Thank you. Uh, I move. Uh, that the board instruct Mark Spino to engage in a process to review class rank on transcripts and that we do not uh, support the current request of parents to modify transcripts for this year. Second. All right, we got a second. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it is, that is now open for discussion. <coughs> Ruby. Um, I think I Matt Ruby McAdoo. Uh, Ruby McAdoo, board member. Mm -hmm. um, I think that my question um, is specifically related to um, I'm realizing that I think that this is a question really this is my question. <laughs> It has to do with the, um, the individual request and whether or not we see any reasonable pathway towards resolution for the individuals who've asked for this accommodation and or the, for this change. So I think that question, the answer to that question will help me in making a vote on that, this motion. And I think I need the answer from staff is there any reasonable pathway forward can i have rhonda answer yes i, I want rhonda i mean sure. i just feel like rhonda can answer that best i'm not a hundred percent sure what you're asking so if if there are individuals families who've said we want our kid this year to have the this to be optional but we're talking about to, to if, if we as a district are saying we're not ready to make a, a blanket move, is there any way that for those two kids a change could be made? I'm not saying this is my, what I advocate for, but I'm saying that do you, is there any reasonable way to consider that request on an individual basis is what I mean. My answer would be no because to change it for two individuals without giving the entire opportunity for the class to make that same change. And Rich and I had this conversation, you know, it, it, even on September 3rd, there were people who have moved forward down the pipeline and Rich sent me an article that I think is very telling of where we are. And if you will give me a moment to find it, I will. It comes from College Board. Mm -hmm. And it says, um, and just one second. It talks about what, call it, what um, applicants look at. 
And in here, it's, it's talking about how all colleges, not all colleges, but um, it says, whether or not your school district promotes the class ranking system, you and your colleagues must find a way, it's an article written by the college board that Rich forwarded to me, to parents, whether or not your school district promotes the class ranking system, you and your colleagues must find a way to make colleges aware of your students' achievements and future potential. You can do this by providing colleges with contextual information such as, and I do know the college in question that we're talking about, somewhat looks at rank but looks at this. Student GPA and activities that students are involved in, high school curriculum, range and median of student GPAs, range and median of SAT scores and ACT scores, results of AP exams, grade distribution of the class, student portfolios, personal recommendations from teachers or counselors describing specific attributes, behaviors, skills, and achievements, listing of colleges and universities that accepted students from the previous year. And as Julie Atherman Hovis pointed out, she had a rank that wouldn't normally get her into Swarthmore College. But at this point, the reasonable way forward, in my opinion, for Rich and his son, is to make sure that when they are given a system of class rank that has held, and we have not had the ability to poll all stakeholders, is to, to be able to have a reasonable conversation with that college, either through the parent, the student, or their uh, independent counselor that they have working on their son's behalf to make sure that those are hammered home and that the college, at this point, is that the college sees the character of the student before them, not the rank. And this particular college sees rank as somewhat important, but looks at rigor. And I would hammer home the rigor and make sure that that rigor does meet the minimum requirements and recommendations of that college. I would also make sure any sort of activities, letters of recommendation, anything extra, a personal conversation. I tell students all the time, if you're trying to get into a college that is a reach for you, make a personal <coughs> connection with the admissions representative. Let them get to know you above a piece of paper. And that would be the way forward that I would recommend for this family. Thank you. Um, Sean Murphy. Yeah, Sean Murphy. Um, I, th I think there, you know, there's real value in what we're discussing, and that is, is class rank, um, you know, is it something that brings people down to some respect? And I'm sure that it does. But it also motivates. Um, I, I've known students that start right off, right, as actually in, in grade school that I want to get a perfect score so that I can go to Mount Snow skiing. So it's a motivator for some kids from some students. It's a big motivator. Uh, take AP courses, um, you know, really challenge themselves as much as they possibly can, and then try to get a, a high rank. As Rhonda mentioned, the, the golden and green scholarships at UVM are based on the class rank. So, you know, I think I think there are definitely problems with rank, but I think in order to look at a better solution, it would have to be done very carefully and it would have to be done in collaboration with higher education institutions so that they know we don't do cross rank anymore, but we still have here we are in Vermont, we have three students that would that would be eligible for the University of Vermont, green and gold, um, and develop a whole system. So I think it's, I think it's critical to to look at it. So I also applaud the parents for bringing it up. So. Thank you very much. Um, Matt, would you read that motion just to make sure we're all hearing it of as course. we as we offer comment? Uh, the motion is that the board instruct Mark Spino to engage in a process to review noting class rank on transcripts and that we do not support the current parent request to remove class rank for this year. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, other board comments? Um, Tim, would you identify yourself? Tim Maceo. Um, so, first, 
I've never been a high school counselor, but I have served on college admissions uh, boards. And one thing that I think is misunderstood is that college admissions committees look at the transcript and, th and, and think, oh, this is acceptable, this is not. You take a college like Boston University um, that, that gets literally over 78,000 applications for 9,000 spots. What the committees do is they build a class to make sure that they have representation, geographic representation, okay. they have their musicians or athletes, legacies are always in there. Um, so the, the notion that one student is competing against another student in our high school for a spot at BU is, is just ludicrous. Um, but getting back to moving forward, um, whether this should be a policy uh, issue or not, um, I don't think that this is minutia. This is obviously uh, um, an issue that will impact, um, as Eva pointed out, equity, um, the impact of social emotional well-being of our students, impact um, the decision of, uh, of students how to move forward beyond uh, secondary school. It's a, it's a big issue. And the education records policy, I think, is the appropriate place to discuss it. Uh, there's no mention of class rank in that, in that policy. And I think that education records is where we might discuss it. So with that thought in mind, uh, Matt, I would want this to be a discussion, not just laying it out on, on laying it on Mark's shoulders, but a collaborative discussion with the board and administration as we normally do in policy meetings. So I, I take the correction. Uh, I certainly did not mean to minimize um, this issue by using the word minutia. I was looking at the policy and I was looking at the enumeration of the policy <coughs> and um, that's what I was referring to. I do um, take your suggestion that we should look at this in policy committee and we are going through all the policies that were uh, brought into this district with the merger en masse and um, going through them uh, systematically. That one is on the agenda and I think that we can address this in the policy committee um, concurrently with um, work that's being done um, on the administrative side of the house looking at um, looking at ranking. So I, I don't see one as negating the other. And forgive my use of that word. That was um, not appropriate given the seriousness of this discussion this evening. Um, Eva, you have your hand up. Um, uh, I, I, um, there's another person who had their hand up. You are a board member, Eva, right now. Okay. I'm calling on you as a board member with this discussion. Okay. Sure. Um, so I'd also like to say in regards to the, um, in regards to the rank, um, which I didn't add in my, my other, um, comment was that it's also a class issue. Um, so it, 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 it affects, uh, it affects all marginalized people, um, and I I think that when we're looking at um, this decision, one of the things that has come up is that to make it optional, not to eliminate it, but to make it optional. And I think that's a really important point that if you want to, um, if you're applying for scholarships, you have that ability to make that um visible and you can apply for scholarships because I think that the conversation it to me seemed to be turned into oh we're taking it away completely and that's not what I I heard from the parents that it would be an optional thing um I'd also like to um thank the parents for bringing this up because I, I do think that uh it's a really important uh topic and I also think the comment that they're not educators and you know they're doing the best that they they can with the information that they have um the parents are doing the best that they can with the information that they have they 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 weren't they're not educators so having 
giving that comment in September um, and not doing it like two years ago, I think um, I think that uh, it's like they, like I said, they're not educators. Um, so um, one of the things I think moving forward, it should definitely go into um, policy. But I'd also like to um, go back to the to the comment because there was one question about that. You know, is there anything that we could do for the for the two two kids? And the answer was no. Um, is the answer still no? Uh, going going back to the topic of making it optional and not removing it. So, um, um, thank you, Eva. Um, I think um, I think the September um, the the issue being raised in September was uh, was pretty clearly addressed um, that we in September we're already in the college admission process um, for sure. Um, I think Eva, you're raising uh, pertinent points that need to be considered and addressed in um, as the language that was used earlier in an an intentional way with stakeholders present. So um, thank you for reminding us of that. Um, we are still discussing this, um, this particular motion. Um, and I, I really want to stay very focused on the wording of the motion. So um, Victoria, you, or Peter, you have your hand up. Sure, thank you, Deborah. So yeah, I just wanted to respond to just a couple of things. And first of all, I wanted to say, you know, thank you for raising up the possibility that you could address the situation for the parents in the room that lifted this up. Um, I understand concerns about equity, and I'd love to point out that if there was such a concern about equity, why are we even having the discussion about class rank and why is it it's still something that happens? Um, also, I found it um, kind of ridiculous in a way to, to think that, you know, um, having class rank isn't a disadvantage to some students in an application. On average, when an admissions officer is reviewing an application, they have two to three minutes tops to look at an application. So they quickly scan it, to be honest, they'll quickly scan essays and the numbers are the things that stick out at them. And that's just a reality. And also this notion that class rank encourages motivation, I, I find that I find that to be com completely false. We all know, or I think many of us know that learning works best when it's intrinsic and not extrinsically motivated. So extrinsically motivating students, you're motivating them in the wrong way and you're encouraging them not to be um, lifelong learners, but just to do it for these, um, you know, these external motivations. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share that and I do really implore the board and I implore the administration um, to support um, the parents. So Peter and I and Kim and Rich um, in our request um, to support our students and give them the best opportunity possible. That's the reason we're here. Of course, we care about the rest of the students and we're really happy that we raised this and that this is not everybody's radar. But right now our students are at a critical moment um, and um, it's, yeah, this is the reason that Rich brought it up when he did, because he's thinking about this. This is on his, his radar right now, as it's on mine and Peter's radar right now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Again, we are going to stay very focused on this particular motion. That's where, that's where we're situated right now. Um, yes, Matt Shibley. Matt Shibley, I'd like to call the vote. Amen. Ooh. Yes. Thank you. I, th I think that is appropriate. We've had we've had ample uh, discussion. Thank you. So um, it's the question has been called. We have to vote on calling the question. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. And um, so we're calling the question. Um, we're going to uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, and the question has been called and it has passed, which means that we are uh, putting the motion to a vote at this point. And um, for clarity- I'm Sorry, um, I oppose. I just want that on the record that I I did oppose. not know that. Okay, then that's yeah. a roll call vote for the motion. 
This is, um, just a minute, this is calling the question. Okay, All, uh, so Ann Beekman calling the question. Aye. Tim calling the question. Kimber Tim. I'm sorry? Tim. Tim, Tim. Maceo. Aye. Ruby McAdoo. Aye. Sean Murphy. Aye. Eva Nolan. No. Kim Price. Aye. Brian Reamer. Aye. Colleen Savage. Aye. Matt Chibley. Aye. Deborah Stanford, aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Um, thank you, the motion has been called. Um, we are now putting the, um, the motion to a vote. And I'm going to proceed with a roll call vote on the motion at this point. Um, Matt, uh, again, for clarity, would you please read the motion? Of course. Motion that the board instruct Mark Spino to engage in a process to review noting class rank on transcripts and that we do not support the current parent request to remove class rank for this year. Okay, uh, that is the motion and it is now being put to a vote. I'm doing a roll call vote. Ann Beekman. Aye. Tim Maceo. Aye. Ruby McAdoo. Aye. Sean Murphy. Aye. Eva Nolan. No. Kim Price. Aye. Brian Reamer. Aye. Colleen Savage. Aye. Matt Shibley. Aye. Deborah Stanford. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay. Um, thank you very, very, very much. This has been a. Um, I, I really want to extend um, a heartfelt thank you to the parents who brought this forward. I want to extend, um, at the same time, regret um, for a vote that is not in keeping with um, the issues that you've presented. I would like to extend a heartfelt um, thank you to every administrator sitting in this room, as well as to every board member um, in this uh, space. I, um, I want to thank everyone for their contributions and uh, commitment to the well-being and the education of students in our district. Um, there are a couple of hands up at this point, so I do want to acknowledge that. I, I, uh, Rich Corson has his hand up, Tim Maciel has his hand up. Go ahead, Rich. Um, Rich Corson, please. You have the floor. Yeah. Um, first, I want to say um, thank you for, you know, engaging. And that's what this whole process was about, right? We wanted to have a meaningful <laughs> discussion um, about this issue. And obviously, we're disappointed at the outcome. But I do feel like um, this was the first time we were allowed to engage and have a meaningful conversation about this topic. And we don't have any hard feelings. You know, Hannah, we think, you know, you've, um, uh, you know, helped us in the past with an issue at the school. And, you know, we're not, again, we were not here for a fight. Um, we hope you strongly consider, you know, this issue moving forward. Um, and I do hope that engagement with parents um, improves um, so that uh, we don't have to get to, I, I can't remember the gentleman on the board, the, so we don't have to get here two days before a deadline and talk about this so that we can have, um, we don't have to all, you know, I'm in New York, you know, we, everyone has lives. I just implore you to engage with parents in a meaningful way so that um, they feel like they're heard and they, that you can advocate for uh, the parents. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Um, thank you for that comment. Um, Tim Maceo. I just wanted clarification. Passing that motion um, doesn't preclude the policy meeting, which is a public meeting, uh, from continuing the discussion of class rank and policy, correct? That is absolutely correct. And as I said, those two will run concurrently. Absolutely. So let me say that again. The policy committee 
And I believe our next meeting is um, November. Uh, we got our next meeting on November 13. We meet at 2 o'clock, and um, it is a warrant meeting. It's got a Zoom capability. It is recorded. Um, so whether or not, because of prior commitments, you are able to attend a policy meeting. Uh, that meeting is recorded, and we do welcome comments. We do welcome guests uh, coming and um, sharing with us. So um, let's let's keep and so let's keep that in mind. Uh, Brian Reamer. Yeah, yeah. Brian Reamer, Guilford uh, School Board. I just have a question. I'm not clear. Our our motion was to direct. Mark and it, through administration and the staff to work on this issue, which I think is very appropriate. Um, but now I'm hearing the policy committee is going to be working on it. So, in a very different way. So we, my, sorry, my, sorry my question comes because a moment ago, not a more, several moments ago, you had, had indicated that and clarified that it's really a policy, <coughs> to be a, a procedure that we're talking about, not necessarily a policy. So I just want us to be clear about where we're putting the energy to get this work done so that it does get done and gets done in the right way. The, uh, so I'm, I'm, so my understanding of this is the energy, as you state it, so that it gets done in the right way, belongs to administration, very clearly to administration. It is the purview of the policy committee to read each policy, and we do read them out loud in the policy, to hear the rhythm of the language and the intent of the policy. So, um, and I thank uh, Tim Maciel for um, bringing to the board's attention um, F6 education records, which is a mandatory policy. And so we will look at that policy. Where our discussion will go in policy committee, I don't know at this point, but uh, the burden quite frankly, it, in my view, is, um, as the motion says, um, for the superintendent uh, to engage in this work. Okay, thanks for yeah. that. Thank you very hey. much. Thank hey. you. Um, Tim Maceo. Yeah, just, this is the, one of those gray areas, Brian, where, yeah, it's a, a matter of implementation, but the board has every responsibility to see that policies are implemented in the proper way or if something is not being implemented um, to, to address that. So this is one of those gray areas. Is it implementation? Is it, yeah, it is, but the policy doesn't, I mean, the, uh, the board also has oversight of that. Absolutely, absolutely. That goes without saying, that statute, and um, that's why we're sitting here right now. Right. So um, thank you. Um, Kim Price. As, yes, Kim Price, Brattleboro on the board um, but just with what Brian was saying I just don't want the policy council creating a policy saying we're no longer doing ranks class rankings without the admin the admin and all of them being able to do their job first and I don't want us circumventing and creating a policy and we're not overseeing now we're we're policing so, um, and, and policing is not the correct word, yeah, so I apologize yeah, for that. Yeah, no, but, 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 yeah, we are not going to step into the implementation mm -hmm. side. And um, as chair of policy, I take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. We look at it very closely. And administrators sit on that committee. They're not voting members. Mark is a regular, Mark Espino uh, <laughs> is a regular member of that. And as we take a look at it, I'm sure um, members of the college guidance uh, group, someone will be sitting uh, and um, participating in that process. So um, we are we're uh, we're we're going to practice board oversight. Okay, um, Sean Murphy. Sean Murphy. Yeah, I would just like to agree very strongly with what Kim just said. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, policies come to the board. So if there's something in the policy that the board objects to, it doesn't have to be passed, it can be changed. So it's, it doesn't very often happen because it's 
they're so esoteric and cumbersome. But, um, oh, know. they're excellent. <laughs> they're <laughs> <never changed. laughs> so um, I, I thank you, Sean, for uh, saying that. And I just want to say that publicly. Um, when a policy leaves the committee, and it will only leave the committee when we have 100% buy-in, we will continue working on it again and again and again. And we have done that with some extraordinary policies. Um, and it comes to the board, to the community, for what is called the first reading. And 10 days pass, waiting for comment, waiting for emails to come in. It goes for a second reading, waiting for comment. And it is then um, in uh, the third board meeting, so we're talking about a period of six weeks, it is before the board for a vote. We have had policies that have been voted on and approved and give it one month, and it's back in the policy committee. So if there is something in the policy that bears closer scrutiny, it comes back to policy and those of us who serve on policy, we love the work that we do on policy. It's detail-oriented. And it is about a full commitment to ensuring the well-being of this district in every way. Take that very seriously. Um, I, Rhonda. I, I just want to say before we wrap up for the evening that I, too, am very grateful to the parents for bringing this issue forward. I'm extremely grateful for the consideration that you as the board gave us and to allow us to have some public feedback. I especially want to talk to Eve in that I want everyone to know that as we move forward and we will move forward to look at this issue of rank, it will not be done through a lens of privilege. Um, I come from a long line. I'm the very first woman in my family to ever go to school first generation all the way along in my family of sharecroppers. I know what it means. I came up in a military non-officer. I know what it feels like to be seen as not in the elite class. And I just want you to know, Eve, that we will look at this at a very, very multi-layered lens that considers everyone and that we do understand the, the serious nature of this issue and that we will take it seriously and I do want to be more than appreciative to this board for giving us a true opportunity to consider it thoroughly with all voices heard and I really appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, Ruby. Um, I, 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 I have two things to say and one is on kind of a macro scale and one is a micro scale and I think that um, when on a micro scale, I feel like, you know, when I, I, I'm happy that we've, you know, come together and happy to, have, you know, that we're, we're focusing on this. Um, I, uh, I feel for the families because they've asked for something and I really, I, if I could make, wave a magic wand, I wish that could happen. And, um, and it's not. And, so, and that's unfortunate in a lot of ways. But one thing I, I would like to kind of highlight um, that Rhonda talked about was around um, looking at the whole, the whole student and aspects beyond just the class rank and really emphasizing those things. It's, it seems to me that um, families in question and, and you know, are, are, they have resources that are allowing them to bring in people that are helping them. But even with that, I, I hope that you as a school are reaching out to all students, but particularly those who've expressed that this is a concern, um, to really do everything we can, even in the next three days, to help to amplify whatever needs to be amplified. So that's on the, mi mi the micro scale. More on the macro scale, it, you know, is really how I, the importance that I see in this, and this, this goes a little bit to what, this goes to what Eva is mentioning as well. When we look at the data um, at the board level around um, some of the gaps, you know, achievement gaps, particularly around IEP students, you know, 
this is this is really ties this conversation ties into that so this is not we're not talking about some imaginary thing that's really far away it is right in there and so when i think about how will we come back to this conversation how will we we touch on this again that's my hope is that as you know in those you know possibly even at the summit level you know like when we come together uh as all of the, the multiple districts this might be a, the kind of conversation. This 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 thing is important, and um, and so I I just implore you know mark you as as the person who's leading that conversation to remember to touch touch back into this, and and um, I don't know exactly when that is in the calendar, but I hopefully there'll be a time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, any other comment? Eva, I see your hand. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, um, before we leave, I just wanted to thank the parents for bringing this um, topic up. And congratulations to your children for graduating high school. I mean, this is amazing. And I, uh, I, I am sorry that um, things didn't, things didn't go how you planned. But um, I, I believe uh, that the future is bright for them, and I am really proud of my vote. So thank you so much for bringing this up. And I will say that for me, this doesn't end tonight. Um, I will bring this topic up. I will speak up, um, no matter how uncomfortable it is. And I will, uh, you have brought the mantle, and I will carry it on. So thank you so much um, for your bravery and your courage. And uh, I just want to echo what Eva said. I Thank think you. we are all committed to carrying that mantle. I'm hearing that um, down the line um, and the nods in the space. So this is uh, this is definitely a 10 member commitment in terms of oversight. So this has been a particularly significant meeting and um, I thank everyone once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Chair, there being no further business before this board, I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned aye. at 7.48. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.